good morning. I'm gonna go check the chicks. We moved them yesterday up to the greenhouse. And the girl said there's a big surprise for me. So I'm gonna go up and check. Sorry, it's early morning and a morning, morning voice. <laughs> morning, sweetie. So our chicks were not meant to be in the house. We were planning on having them up in the greenhouse, but they were so little they were popping through the netting, which we thought was small enough. So sometimes on your homestead, things don't go as beautifully as you envision, um, but you make it work. <laughs> I hear the heater. I hear the heater. <laughs> By the way, guys, <clears throat> I gave up coffee and I feel so much better. Um, I love the taste of coffee. I don't like the way it makes me feel jittery. So I switched to something called Dandy Blend and it tastes like coffee. I love it. So it's my morning drink that I could drink all morning without feeling crazy. Let's go see these chicks. Okay, this is my surprise. Somehow our wine cap mushrooms ended up in the greenhouse and there's another one over here. <laughs> You may, pick it. you may pick that one, Grace and Sawyer. You want to point to this one? Show yeah. me where this one is. And then we have another one up here. Check it out. We have 10 pounds coming, so we're going to be putting them all over our wood chip garden, and I'll show a video of that. I have one made, but I'll do another one. <laughs> so we raise a variety of meat bird that's called a color yield and they're from Freedom Ranger. So what Freedom Ranger did was they took the conventional Cornish cross that are grown in those, you can see those chicken houses that grow commercial meat birds. They took those fast growing Cornish cross birds and they paired them with the slower growing heritage breed Freedom Ranger and they created a baby. <laughs> well, a chick. <laughs> um, an amazing homestead chick for growers that want a more um, heritage style traditional bird that gets enough weight on it to provide for the family but um, has wild instincts and so that's what we got. So since uh, we found these little Freedom Rangers, I'll show you. Look at them, they're so cute. They're cute now. <laughs> um, <laughs> They do stay cute though. When they get bigger, they don't sit by their feeder. Um, they love to scratch and peck, they love to fly, and they do get a nice weight on them too. So I think we had like five, six pound birds when we were um, harvesting last year. And so when we started raising meat birds, we started with Freedom Ranger because we wanted a heritage breed bird. We wanted a dual purpose homestead bird that would lay eggs um, and, and grow at a slower pace. But what I was finding is I had to cook two birds and that was only Brooke and I then. Grace was a baby. Um, so it was just for us two. And I had to cook two birds for dinner. <laughs> and I was like, there, this is ridiculous. So then we went with the Cornish cross and we're like, these are amazing. They grow so fast. They, they would meet weight at like six to eight weeks. Um, and they had like so much meat on them. But the downside of that is they grew really fast. They kind of just sat at their feeder. They didn't move. Um, they didn't do well in heat. We had a lot die. And if they went past eight weeks, they would start breaking legs. And so we even tried to ration their feed and that just didn't work. So. When a friend of ours told us about Freedom Ranger Color Yield, we were like super excited. So we tried them last year. We did like a late summer into fall um, uh, a batch. We did about 50 of them and loved them. We only lost like two. And with our Cornish Cross, we would always lose like 10 of them or more. Um, and so these guys are so, so sweet. They still scratch and peck and try to fly. Um, very, very healthy bird. And I think that like, let me think. When we butchered, we had about like five to six pound birds, which is great. So now I cook two birds a week so that I have just leftovers and they feed our family of five very well. I can't say enough about these birds. So I'll leave that link below so that you can order some, some of your own Freedom Ranger color yields for your own homestead.
So these grow, we grow them for 12 weeks um, out on pasture. So they're here now in our brooder. So what is a brooder? A brooder is a small area for your baby chicks to grow until they're um, to that like teenage stage where they can go out on pasture. They're, they're durable enough to withstand, you know, some of the weather. Now we do have a tarp over our, um, our chicken tractor, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but they're gonna stay in here under a heat lamp and by their feeder, by their water, um, in a safe location. So like I said, we weren't planning on having our chickens stay in the house with us, uh, <laughs> but they just kept popping through this netting. So this netting here is just like a landscape netting that we use a lot around our homestead. But these are little tiny holes and they were popping through them like, like it was nothing. So we set up a makeshift brooder in our house. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You guys can build something with scrap wood. Um, we used this um, Rubbermaid tote until they got pretty big, pretty fast. And then we moved to a um, just a cardboard box that we cut the top off, put the heat lamp in there and wood chips and um, we just refreshed those wood chips every three days until we could dump them out and start new. So that is the one thing, you're just gonna wanna refresh wood chips a lot. Don't overthink this, guys. We started with 50 and we'll do another batch in um, late summer um, because harvesting all of those and moving them, that's a lot of work. And so if you can do them in smaller batches, it's more optimal because they grow fast. I mean, 12 weeks, three months, right? Um, if you do go with the Cornish Cross, they're gonna grow to wait at like six weeks. Um, you can stretch them to eight weeks and that's, but that's when they start to break their legs. So, um, because they're so heavy and they can't withstand their weight. Um, we tried to ration their food for the Cornish Cross, but uh, I don't know. I feel like they, do, they don't do as well in the heat. So the Freedom Ranger color yields do better in summer heat um, because, because they don't have that extra weight on them. Okay, so I did have a question um, from one of you guys about is there ever a time where you can just put your chicks in a location where it's warm enough that they wouldn't need like a heat lamp or like a heat source? Not necessarily. Chicks have to be at about 100 degrees. 90 is mm, pushing it. So when they come out of the incubator at its, you know, and you get them at a day old, they still need to be really warm. So they're coming out of the incubator at you know 100 degrees and they need to remain at that temperature. And so one thing you can do instead of a heat lamp, if you don't want to use a heat lamp, Puritan's Pride, I'm sorry, not Puritan's Pride, Producer's Pride, I'll put this down in the links below, has a nice heat lamp or a heat plate so it doesn't have that harsh uh, light and you can, you know, change, change the height of this. I was losing my train of thought. Um, and the upside of that is like it's it's like their mother's wings and so they can just tuck underneath and it's nice and cozy you can um, elevate it as they grow the other thing is um, if you can get one there's other varieties out there other brands that have like a domed lid where they don't jump on top and poop all over it because that is the downside this will get really messy um, and if you do have multiple birds like this would probably hold maybe 15 under here 15 to 20 at a small age as they grow, um, less are gonna fit in here, obviously. So you might wanna get more of these, and these are about $50. So think about the investment you wanna put into your homestead. Heat lamps are great, they just pose a fire risk. Um, up here, I'm okay with them, but when they're in my house, I always think about, okay, that's wood chips <laughs> with heat. That doesn't mix well. But, um, I mean, we haven't had an issue. So, that's your heat sourcing. So I'm going to take you down and show you where we keep their food because that's another question I get. What do you feed them? Because um, it is different than laying hens because the protein ratio is different with your chick starter and your chick grower. Yeah, you can take that in. I'm done, honey. Thank you. When you're starting chicks, meat birds, we'll, be, we'll call them broilers. That's what a meat bird is technically called, a broiler. And there are other varieties of heritage breed um, birds that are dual purpose birds that do grow larger um, if you don't want to go with like a cross like what we do but um, when you're starting your chicks you want to get something called a chick starter because again the protein ratio is different than the adult food medicated <laughs> since we had them in such a small location they were getting coccidiosis and that's a bacteria from eating you know their own poo because they were in a small location in our in our kitchen 
Um, so if they have ample room to freely, you know, walk about and peck and scratch, then they they won't really have an issue with coccidiosis. But they were they were just eating their poop as much as we were trying to refresh their bedding. We did have to get some medicated food, and sometimes you just have to do that if you want to. You know, if you don't want to lose any of your birds, and we had some that were looking pretty ill, they were looking like they were on their deathbed, and so we had to get some medication into them fast, and so we substituted some medicated food for them, and now that they're on pasture up top, we just have them eating just regular old chick starter, and we get that from a local, uh, a local granary, a, lo a local feed mill that hand mixes, um, custom mixes all their feed, and if you can buy in bulk, that would be optimal. So one bird, one broiler will eat about, now this is a conventional broiler, so that would be your Cornish cross, eats about 18 pounds in that eight weeks. Since we grow them out larger, I would say about 20 to 22 pounds of feed per bird in those 12 weeks. And so we estimate about 30 bags of feed uh, for that time, for that 12 week period. Plus they're getting, you know, they are eating grass and everything and bugs and they're able to be on pasture, but they do go through a lot of food. Um, and so we get about 30 bags of feed for 12 weeks. And then once they're past that, um, you know, I would say seven week mark, then you can, or even six week, let's just say six weeks um, for our birds. And then you can put them on what's called chick chicken grower and that's the adult form of chicken feed so let me show you where we keep our feed Stop <laughs> it. we do have an old barn and this grain bin was left here so we keep all of our feed in here to keep them safe from rodents um, the girls also I shouldn't say the girls we all do we have just old coolers rubber made totes that we empty the feed into so let's see if there's anything in here yep so that's goat food. Um, and so we did have it labeled. They've all kind of just, all the labels have come off, but we kind of know in our head what, what feed is what. So another option, if you are buying in bulk and you don't have, you know, old fashioned grain bins um, in a barn like we do, I was thinking about this, like what could you use? Um, and I came up with an idea that, I don't know, tell me if you like this and if this would work for your homestead, but um, freezers old freezers that do not work if you can find a very large old freezer on craigslist facebook marketplace from a friend um snag it <laughs> because that would be optimal for keeping bags and bags of feed until you need them um and keeping them safe from rodents so i'm up here now and i'm going to show you guys the chicken tractors that we use because this is something that Brooke created, he designed, we've used multiple chicken tractors. I'll show you our old design and what we wanna get rid of. This is kind of like just our dump site up here by our barn. Um, but this guy right here, we thought this was absolutely amazing. We thought it was gonna work great and it did for a year and then we had predators because it wasn't, it wasn't predator safe. There were still areas that they could go under, um, they could get in and that needs to be burned or taken to the dump. Now Brooke designed these out of um, like a metal bracing and that landscape netting again. And I wanna do a whole video because we have to revise these. We have to revamp them, put new netting on, fix a few things that um, we noticed could be a concern, but they were super lightweight. We used a tarp over the top so that way the chickens could get some cover from rain or some heat. And then we had this landscape netting, this mesh, um, just kind of screwed in to this bracing that we used here. And it's really, really, really lightweight. The girls and I could move it. I could move it on my own. And we just moved it all around the yard. We had two of them for 50 chickens, um, so 25 in each. And it worked really well. So on your homestead, Things are going to work for a season and then you are going to find that okay this didn't work but this did and you're going to revise it you're going to make it better and you're going to make it yours so what we're sharing here today is just some tips on how to raise meat birds how to start them off don't overthink it um, use what you have and uh, and make it your own but join us back here next time while we you know revise these 
chicken tractors and make them brand new again for this season. We'll give you some plans and show you exactly what we're doing. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have questions on how to raise meat birds or anything specific that I didn't cover, um, please let me know because we'll be doing more of these videos as we move them out on pasture and what that looks like and how we um, make feed bins for them, how we do an automated watering system because they go through a lot of water as they grow. Um, but yeah, if you have specific questions, please put them in the comments below. And thanks again for watching and subscribing. See you guys later. Be blessed. Are we, off, are we on schedule? Yes. Okay. No. We are heading to Freedom Ranger Hatchery today. They are about 30 minutes from our house. Uh, we have a really busy Monday, but pickup day is on a Monday. Hey, he said this one here. Huh. Huh. This one here. Huh. This little guy. Uh huh. He came out a little darker. He gave it to <gasps> us. Oh my <laughs> god! She said, "Here, look. Can you see it? This one came out a little darker um, than the others." But he said, "See how this one grows? Oh, he's so cute! And see if it grows like the others." So we have a little experiment to do, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that fun? Yep. Yeah. You're gonna hold that one? We got 51 chicks. 51 chickies. Are we going out the back door? Okay. Is it heavy? That's like a hundred pounds of chicken shit. Oh. Alright, so we should get the tractor? Ooh, I don't want the bottom to fall out. Oh, it's in a, I don't want the bottom to fall out. So we're taped really good with a good tape. Really? Okay. So feeders need to come out, that brick needs to come out, here. Hey, you did the deep bedding? Yeah. in. You're so smart. Is that what? Huh? No. Yeah, it is. It's what? Poop? Oh, that's soggy. Oh. 
Up in there, up in there, hot. Just, just, right. just lift that, just make sure it's gonna, and if we go slow like that, uh -huh. it'll look safe. That's a lot of food. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Hmm. Yeah. That's stinky. Okay, so we have two choices. Mm-hmm. So if you really want to look. Okay, let's go. Reese, you can tell if you want. Don't pull hard. Let's get it outside before it breaks. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, let's push them out. Oh, no, they didn't. They, all the wood chips are, are falling on them. They're trying to go back in. Okay. They're trying to go back in. Here. <laughs>